News coming out of Alabama, Willie will tell you this, is the Alabama-LSU game oh, yeah. this weekend. Yes. Uh, and whether Tua is going to be able to play. <laughs> oh, That's the big play. news. Yeah, but uh, there is, uh, there's some other news, some lesser news. Former Attorney General Jeff Sessions uh, has officially entered the Alabama Senate race. And the first task on his agenda appeared to be making amends with Donald Trump. That's right. The guy who unmercifully mocked him, called him stupid, made fun of him being from Alabama. Well, now President Trump can't vote, of course, in Alabama. But Sessions announced his run for his former Senate seat with a campaign ad that clearly targeted an audience of one. Jeff Sessions here. I approved this ad when I left President Trump's cabinet. Did I write a tell all book? No. Did I go on CNN and attack the president? Nope. Have I said a cross word about our president? Not one time. And I'll tell you why. First, that would be dishonorable. I was there to serve his agenda, not mine. Second, the president's doing a great job for America and Alabama, and he has my strong support. Oh my God. <laughs> so, oh. So, oh. Oh. so, Guy Cecil. You know, if I've said this before about Ted Cruz, if somebody uh, attacked my wife, said she was ugly, uh, uh, a political opponent, uh, I would spend the rest of my life uh, just uh, going after them and, and making sure that they paid for it. Whereas Ted Cruz cannot hug Donald Trump enough. Um, and if 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 I had been attacked like Donald Trump attacked Jeff Sessions. Oh, man, it would be ugly. I, did, I think most people would respond this way. I, but you look at Jeff Sessions like Ted Cruz and these other Republicans that get insulted and trashed and their, their, their manhood challenged uh, by Donald Trump. And they just they remain quizzlings. And I. I feel like asking the question that the nurse on the stand at the end of the verdict asked, who are these men? Who are these men? I, it, who would who would who would humiliate themselves in front of the president and the country like that? Well, the answer is most elected Republican officials in the United States of America. I mean, oh. this was a hostage tape. God. I mean, it, it, like, if you are a political consultant and you're sitting down to your, and you're saying, I, I, I'm going to launch my campaign for the Senate. I'm going to reintroduce myself to the people of Alabama, and I'm going to do it standing in front of a white screen, looking as bad as I possibly could. <laughs> and basically, all I'm going to do is lay down before Donald Trump and just hope and pray that he doesn't stomp on me again. And I mean, this is, it's pretty remarkable. It's a hostage tape. I mean, he literally, he, he's it, literally sitting there begging. He was on another network uh, last night, literally begging for Donald Trump not to not to endorse him, but just <laughs> not to say mean things about him. This is not oh the way. But, but but this is the United States Senate. You know, all of the talk about I, well, behind the scenes, Republican senators say this and they say that. Who cares? They get in front matter. of the camera and, and, and they they do this. Yeah. Yeah, who cares what they say behind the scenes? And same with that anonymous book. Seriously, who cares? Yep. First of all, we know that he's been acting like a crazy man inside the White House. And the question is, uh, when are you going to affix your name to those charges? And what are you going to do about it? But here, here's Jeff Sessions last night uh, playing Quisling in chief uh, to the commander in chief. He has your strong support. Do you have his strong support? Well, I hope so. I, I think he will respect my work. I was there for the Trump agenda every day I was in the Senate. No doubt about it. I was the first Republican, uh, first senator to endorse him. If I return to the Senate, I will. No senator in the Senate will be more effective in advancing President Trump's agenda than I would be. Elise Jordan, Donald Trump said the worst mistake that he ever made 
was making Jeff Sessions his attorney general. He said he was stupid because he went to the University of Alabama Law School. He ridiculed the way he talked, said he was dumb. And Jeff Sessions says he's going to do whatever Donald Trump tells him to do. I don't. Again, I just don't get it. Do, I, do voters really want somebody that weak uh, representing them in Washington? Joe, it just really blows my mind how so many men and primarily men, because, well, let's face the facts, mm -hmm. most national elected Republicans these days are men, but they are right. just willing to bow at the altar of Trump. And after all of that, after all the public humiliation, after the nastiness and just the cruelty that Donald Trump heaped on Jeff Sessions, and I was never a big Jeff Sessions fan, but you got to the point where you just pitied him as a human being for what he went through with the president of the United States just bullying him every single day. I can't imagine a single job in the world that it would be worth it to have to go and bow down to a, your biggest bully like that. And it also just frankly annoys me that Donald Trump calls Jeff Session dumb Southerner and this and that. And mm. then Donald Trump benefits from so much Southern support. And just the, and another example of this, the Mississippi governor, the newly elected Mississippi governor, the chair of the RNC tweets out, oh, Donald Trump saved the race. He was down by double digits. Seriously? And they just take it. They just roll over. And I don't want to say roll over like dogs because I like dogs, <laughs> but they just roll over. <laughs> so, so let me yeah, they, I really, I've just, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, no. It, man, when I ran, I like people like tough leaders. I mean, that's at least what I saw. People like to have representatives that aren't going to put up with anything that are going to go to Washington, D.C. and are going to be tough and fight for them, not fight for whoever the president is or fight for whoever the speaker of the house is, but fight for their constituents. And this is this is a personality cult. I, I never I, I never once like. I never once talked about, oh, I'm going to go up and help so-and-so and, -so and they're a gent. No, it was about the people in my district, the people in Northwest Florida. It wasn't about helping other people. That's why this is so bizarre. I'm going to go up to Washington and I'll be the biggest fighter for the guy who said I was a dumb Alabama Southerner. I don't get it. Yeah, and remember, I think we played the soundbite even yesterday where President Trump's mocking Jeff Sessions' southern accent. And let's be specific. This is from Bob Woodward's book, Fear, Trump in the White House. The President of the United States first used a, a, a derogatory term for Jeff Sessions' mental capacity, which I won't repeat on TV, and went on to say, quote, he's this dumb southerner. Trump told Rob Porter, the White House staff secretary, he went on to say, how in the world was I ever persuaded to pick him for my attorney general? He couldn't even be a one-person country lawyer down in Alabama. Went on to call him a traitor and said his decision to recuse himself in the Russia probe was, quote, the ultimate betrayal. So that's what Donald Trump thinks of the guy who cut the hostage tape yesterday mm. seeking his approval. And by the way, let's just be very clear about it. Jeff Sessions did what any attorney would do in recusing himself. Yes. He had no choice under investigation himself or for some misstatements he had made on Russia. He had no choice but to recuse himself. But Donald Trump doesn't respect the rule of law. He certainly doesn't respect somebody doing what's ethically right. That's exactly what Jeff Sessions did. And for it, he got he got just absolutely blasted, called a traitor. And in return, Jeff Sessions bows, uh, bows down to Donald Trump. Yep. It's just pretty incredible. Groveling for his approval. Guy Cecil, before we let you go, let's forget Mike Bloomberg for a second. State of the Democratic field right now. In flux, no doubt about it. I think that there is a lot of concern, not just about individual policy positions or ideology, um, but whenever you're in the last three or four months leading up to Iowa, there will be more change between today and the Iowa caucus than there was beginning in January mm -hmm. to today. And I think people should fasten their seatbelts because it's going to be bumpy. Majority of Iowa caucus goers undecided still. Important to remember That's that. Right. Guy Cecil, thanks so much. Good to see you.